Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. So today, in today's video, we're going to be going into the second video in chapter four here, which is going into more detail on the XXXY sex determination system, because this is what we know of in mammals. So why have we become what we've become today? So why does our Y chromosome look how it is? Why are females XX? Why are males XY? Um, so again, this is the malian X and Y chromosomes here. So here, the X chromosomes are the same size on each. Well, let me go full screen here to make it a little easier. So here, same size on each. So same X chromosomes here, same genes. So the X chromosome gets two versions of that same gene, which is a pretty good advantage in some cases. So let's say there is a recessive gene on this one right here. This one was dominant. This one would then allow expression, whereas the male only has one version of that, whereas so as the male was recessive, it would present that. Uh, so here, we'll then look at why is the Y chromosome small as well, and how the male and female can overcome this fact that the female has two versions of that same gene and the male has one version. So we'll get into something called dosage compensation as well. The first issue I wanted to talk about is meiosis. Remember in meiosis, you have homologous pairs line up and then they separate. So how do homologous pairs separate in the sex chromosomes? Well, there's a little bit of matching that occurs between these two, so they can still line up. And these regions are called pseudo-autosomal regions, R P A R regions. So pseudo means false. So false autosomal regions. So they're like they're autosomes, but they're not. And there's these are located at the telomeres on the X and the Y chromosome. So over here, we have, you know, pseudo-autosomal region one. These are some of the genes that make them up. And down here, we have pseudo-autosomal region two. These are the genes that make them up. These genes can still go through some levels of crossing over. You typically don't see crossover events occurring between the gray regions here on the chromosome. On the Y chromosome, there's another important gene right here we're going to talk about coming up as well. And that doesn't usually cross over to uh, the X chromosome. This is the gene that determines male development. Uh, so here, I just wanted to mention how we can still separate these chromosomes. So the X and the Y chromosome for males still line up over each other in meiosis one, and also they can still go over a small amount of crossing over. So now let's look at the Y chromosome. So the Y chromosome has about 350 genes on it, uh, and you know, most of those code for male development. There's no gene on the Y chromosome that the female needs uh, to survive. So on the Y chromosome, it has that little short arm and then the longer arm. On that short arm, there's the SRY gene. So the SRY is the sex determining region of the Y chromosome. This is the region that codes for male development. So during development, so here's fertilization event, and then during development at about six weeks, is the major branching point between male and female. So over here you get male development, down here you get female development. This is when that SRY gene is activated. The SRY gene activated codes for male development. What it does is it releases this malarian inhibiting substance that inhibits the female duct network from forming and leads to the production of testosterone. Testosterone then allows for the male network to form, and that's all because of this gene. So if you had an X chromosome or a Y chromosome with this SRY gene that was mutated and didn't work properly, it would never get this branching cue and would continue down the female development. So no cue here continues it down this pathway for female development. So now, why is the Y chromosome small? So the idea is, so this isn't 100%, but the idea is that it descended from a proto X. So this is the original X and then this is a proto uh, X chromosome. So what happened over time, this chromosome developed the that SRY gene. So then this chromosome started getting becoming slightly different than this one in queuing and being responsible for male development. So over time, more genes important for male development began finding themselves on this Y chromosome. And then there was an allele difference between, or not an allele difference, a gene difference between the X and the Y here. So crossing over was prevented in these regions. And, and the result of that was that it lost a lot of the information in between. So the X chromosome stayed the same shape because it had all those genes located on it, whereas the Y chromosome only 
kept its particular genes important for that little bit of time. This is a bad Y chromosome. So now this is the Y chromosome we have today that co codes for male development. And then there's the uh, female chromosome. So that's an idea of why they think the Y chromosome began getting smaller. So now a little bit about the X chromosome. So the X chromosome, again, is the larger one and has you know thousands of genes on it. And a lot of these genes are many non-sexual genes. So these genes are not required for normal female development. A female will develop into a female without needing the genes to turn on, whereas the male needs to have that Y chromosome in order to develop. So that leads us into the next problem. So females have two copies of that chromosome. You know, we talked about this at the beginning of this video. It's two copies of that chromosome, so two copies of that particular gene. Males only have one copy of that chromosome. The female, the, the Y chromosome, doesn't have a version, a version of that particular gene. So females will be making two times the amount of proteins in terms of gene expression compared to the males, because both genes would be expressed normally. So here, this is called dosage compensation. And we come across dosage compensation a lot, especially when we get to chapter eight, when we talk about chromosomal variation. So duplications, deletions, and things like that, can it compensate? So the goal of dosage compensation is to equalize expression levels. So in the case of mammals, the way we do dosage compensation is via X inactivation in females. So X inactivation in females inactivates one of the two X chromosomes, making each one one X or equal dosage. Uh, so this is called the Leon hypothesis. And uh, I think that's, you know, who I don't remember where that name came from for, but probably who discovered it. Uh, so what this does is it produces these little, how's the, so how does one of those chromosomes inactivate? What it happens is this RNA is produced, it super condenses around one of them randomly, and form something known as a bar body. If we look at this image down here, we can actually see where one of these bar bodies are formed. Uh, so down here, you can see this little region that's darker stained. So it formed that bar body and it actually inactivated itself. Uh, so now, how does that work? So, you know, this, this cell had two X chromosomes in it. One was randomly inactivated. Why was that one chosen? Well, it is. That's the thing. It's completely random of how this X inactivation works. Um, oops, getting ahead of myself there. Uh, so what happens? There's this gene. So on the X chromosome, there's the Xist gene. The Xist gene is the X inactivating sp specific transcript. What this does is a gene encoding for a very long RNA sequence. This RNA that's produced then comes back to that same chromosome that activated the excess gene and super condenses it. It becomes super condensed and it forms that bar body. Uh, and again, this is completely random for how this works. And the bar body isn't entirely inactive. It can still do you know, about 10 to 20% gene expression, but the important genes that need to have that dosage compensation usually go through that dosage compensation. So, where can we see this? The best example here are calico cats. So fur color for cats is found on the X chromosome. So here the X chromosome can carry the allele for you know, orange fur or black fur. Now imagine one of these, let's imagine the black X chromosome here was inactivated. That's where you get orange fur. If the orange chromosome was inactivated, that's how you get black fur. So female cats are, you know, this cat would be XO, XB. A calic female calico cat. A male, not, uh, I mean a female orange cat would have this. They'd both be carry the O allele. A black cat, female cat, would be XB, XB. Okay, so how can you have, what about males? Males only carry one X chromosome. So males can only be orange or black only orange or black. So when you look at this cat, random inactivation, uh, don't worry about the white regions, but you get a random inactivation here of the particular regions to get the calico cat. So here the orange was inactivated, here the black was inactivated. Um, so, but males though, you can't have a male calico cat. There's only one situation, very rare, where you can have a male calico cat. Uh, and 
humans, we call this Kleinfelter's disease. I'm not sure what it's called, and if it has a name in cats, but it's when a male has two X chromosomes. So this individual would be classified as a male, but a cat with the orange and black alleles for fur color here would develop into a male calico cat. That's the one situation where you can have a male calico cat. Another thing, so that's the mammalian X X, X, Y system. I just want to talk about a little bit more detail about why the how they separate in meiosis, what is different about the Y chromosome, why it became smaller, how it became smaller, and then some significance about the X chromosome and how we do this dosage compensation thing via X inactivation. Another thing I wanted to talk about today are fruit flies or Drosophila. I want to talk about these because in the next video, we're going to be going into Thomas Hunt Morgan's work on the fruit flies where he was research group discovered that genes are located on the sex chromosomes and that you know he later then discovered sex linkage then as well so the next video is going into sex linked genes and going into that in more detail so i wanted to introduce drosophila here so in drosophila females are xx males are xy so same but just note that they are different x and y chromosomes so down here the X chromosome, so here's female X chromosomes. Here's then the male XY. Notice here how the Y isn't small. The Y is a large chromosome. And I just wanted to make this note that it's not this, even though we're saying XXXY, don't think that it's the same in every you know, species that we talk about here. If we say it's an XXXY sex determination system, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the same shape. Uh, these ones have a different shape in the Drosophila. And also, Drosophila then have that same issue, issue of dosage compensation, where the goal is to equalize expression. And I'm mentioning this because Drosophila do it slightly different. So, what we said, so here the female has two times the amount, and the male has one times the amount of that normal gene production. So in Drosophila, what happens is the male doubles expression levels. And this doubled expression level and this upregulation of this X chromosome now matches the female to X. So just wanted to also say that this dosage compensation is different from species to species as well. So flies upregulate the X chromosome here to produce 2X rather than you know, humans downregulating and inactivating one of these X chromosomes. So different from organism to organism, so I wanted to mention that in the Drosophila, then lead us into the next chapter, which will not next chapter, next video of this chapter, which will be on sex linkage. So we're going to go over Morgan's studies on sex linkage, how he discovered it in fruit flies. And then I'll, the video after that will be a few example problems discussing sex linkage as well. But that's all I have for today. If you have any questions, definitely write them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. I hope you all have a great day and see you all next time. Bye-bye.